Hey everybody, welcome back to Post Farms. Uh, as you know, we're well into 2024, but we're still uh, putting together some 23 uh, footage and uh, probably one last video is gonna come out is gonna be where we start at the beginning and we kind of look at the crop process throughout the summer. Because those of you know, we, was, we started out uh, early had uh, excellent planting conditions. Then we turned off really, really dry. By the end of June, we thought we was gonna have a crop failure. And then we got some wonderful rains. Then we got dry again. Uh, you know, the yield potential was really up and down. And, uh, you know, when it all got said and done, uh, the, our, the crops were tremendous. So hopefully this video will kind of uh, show you just how bad the bads were and maybe how good the goods was. So anyway, everybody laughs at better than expected, but 23 certainly was better than expected. <laughs> it's really getting dry here though. We can sure use the rain. Uh, matter of fact, all, several spots in these beans we've planted the last two or three days are going to need a little rain to get them up. Uh, you know, the, the good part of the field is planting nice and uh, going to moisture, but some of the rough hillsides and stuff, there's just no way we can get them planted, them planted in moisture and not bury the ones on the flat. So we're just going to have to pray that it rains a little bit. You can see it's it's a little dusty. The farm we're on today has always been a extremely wet farm. Uh, and most springs have struggled to get planted in decent shape. Uh, we went in and tiled it like three years ago and it just made a totally different farm out of it. I wish the camera would pick up what I can visually see field though. It's got several different soil types in it. Anywhere from some really heavy what we call gumbo down to some pretty light almost timber soil streaks in it. And it's, it, it really varies and usually some of those will show up in the yield map but this year the, the ground is super dry and everything you can see the streaks of different soil type, every one of them. They're either a different color, a little different texture. Uh, some of it's how it works. Some of it is just like ashes and some of the lighter dirt uh, is still kind of, there's a little almost on the cloudy side to be planted. But between the color and the texture of soil, you can pick out every soil type, every streak of different soil type in this whole farm. And it's, I, I've never seen it that dramatic before from the track. This year we've made a pretty big uh, change in our soybean program. Uh, for years we planted either extend or later extend flex beans. Uh, great yields with uh, extend flex. Uh, the uh, availability or the ability to uh, spray that canvas is becoming even more challenging every year. Uh, well, kind of use the what's the flex? Beans, so we could use Liberty as a kind of a plan B. And uh, the last two years, we've only been able to use plan B. And this year, they shortened up the dicamba cutoff date uh, in Illinois again. So it was kind of the final straw that pushed us into changing to a different chemistry. Liberty is very hit and miss. Last year it was hot, humid. We killed weeds that we should have never killed. The year before it was cloudy and cool all the time and had a terrible control of the water. Again. So this 
Next year we're planting uh, E3 beans, which is uh, basically the 2,4-D tolerant instead of dicamba tolerant. Still running a good residual program with the Dua Pro down ahead, ahead of the planter and, and burn down on this no-till stuff. Uh, and come back with uh, the uh, Enlist and uh, probably the uh, type of grass herbicide did to get the grass and the volunteer corn. Hopefully, uh, I, I, I have no doubt that the chemical program will work. I just hope that we can get the yield out of them like we have been in the flux. Hey everybody, it's June 27th today, we're out here doing a little crop, crop scouting. I don't know, many of you may know, we've been terribly dry. And uh, I'll show you a little corn here, on a little lighter dirt, it uh, was planted, uh, I believe it was the 10th of April, it was the Monday after Easter. I'm I'm six one, and you can see the corn just hits me in, you know, between the waist and the the chest. You know, it's drying up. The ground is still loose from the planting because it hasn't had enough rain to make a crust. It's just dust for the. Sad part is this corn's been in the ground long enough that it should be tasseling. And the same hybrid planted two days before on a little better dirt is in the field across the grass strip here, and it it is showing some tassels today. We'll stop up there and look at it, but uh, it's got some corn looks like this in it, and corn is tasseling. I look. I always have a lot of hope and I never estimate too high, but this isn't looking very promising to me. Okay, we're probably in the best spot in this whole farm as far as corn wise and dirt wise. And it's it's tasseling. It again I'm Again, I'm 6'1", and the corn isn't any taller than I am. And this hybrid, the only thing I really usually uh, have a negative on it is it gets a little tall. But So it's not a short corn to begin with, but it's, it's definitely short this time. And uh, like I said, we're, 
we're we got tassels out we're dropping pollen but there's not much for shoots and silk i'm afraid the timing is going to be off on it uh and unless we get some rain uh it's not going to pollinate and it's certainly not going to produce an ear but it's we're down to the crunch time i mean two inches of rain tonight and tomorrow could make a huge difference on it but it's it's days are about numbered so and then it's going to have to keep raining because like i said earlier one shower is not going to make or break this this crop now we're in some beans right across the right across the lane from where we was in that corn uh these beans were planted i believe the 28th of april so they've been in the ground almost two months and they got a long ways to go to even close the rows yet again kicking the dirt it's loose no moisture they're trying to bloom we still got some chemical damage because these beans uh spraying in list and some uh residual and uh, a little fusillade or a sure or something for volunteer corn in the grass uh, just burnt the shit out of them or it's been two weeks over two weeks since they were sprayed and they still haven't grown out of it yet because it's just so dry and the beans are so stunted and slow just the beans have a lot of potential yeah we can get a lot of ra late rains and we could raise pretty decent beans but this corn is numbered. Its days are numbered. Uh, and the sad part is it could rain two inches tonight. And it, it ain't going to be enough. It's going to have to rain two inches every other day for about a week. To uh, get any soil moisture back up to where it's going to help it. And I think we're so close to pollination that I, I don't have a lot of hope for it. Morning everybody. It's, I think it's July 10th this morning. Uh, we're out here looking at some corn, trying to see if uh, our timing is about right for some fungicide application. Uh, it's just amazing walking out this corn, how much it's changed in the last 10 days. I mean, 10 days ago, before it rained, it was uh, not looking very promising at all. It was trying to tassel, but it didn't, just like it didn't have enough power to even push out a tassel and uh, you know fungicide was a long ways from wasn't even a thought because we weren't going to spend any more money on a failing crop and we got about three inches of rain last week and it is just amazing how this corn here on the especially on the better dirt has just absolutely changed turned around and now is kind of a picture of health but uh you know, it's going to take more rain th through the season. That big rain we got last week was just a band-aid. But uh, at least I think there's potential out here now. So we're kind of looking at things, trying to decide if we're going to spend the money for fungicide. And uh, and uh, I'll, try to, I'll show you a few years here and stuff. But, I mean, at least there's potential here to make it worthwhile spending some money on. Because this hybrid does respond really well. To fungicide and it will probably be some of the last corn we shell so it will help with plant health and standability so as you can see we're we're kind of scattered in pollination a little bit there's a plant every now and then that tried to tassel a little early but uh, we're right in the heat of pollination right now on most of it and it's just unbelievable. All these plants are trying to shoot two ears. And, uh, you know, 10 days ago, two weeks ago, this looked like maybe it might need just be destroyed instead of harvested. It's, but, like I said, we're a long ways from, we're a long ways from the drought being broken because we still have some pretty massive cracks and we have dry dirt. But, at least now we have potential again. So that's more than we had before.
us to have the crop that we've got. Uh, it's not a bumper crop, but it's, it's a decent crop for as dry as it was. Uh, I think we're looking pretty bleak around here. Uh, very real late June. We had not had any rain to speak of in uh, April, May, or most of June. Looking pretty tough. Uh, I think I've got a clip or two of a shot last summer that I've never been doing anything with. I'll try to throw in here. But uh, basically, up by we were getting ready to pass a little bit of June, it, uh, it looked so bad that I thought the corner was possibly going to be a, a total failure. I didn't think it would ever pollinate. It didn't even want to pass it. Uh, we got worse than a three to four inches of rain and around the 4th of July weekend. And the corn uh, made a just remarkable recovery after that. If somebody would have told me that corn would grow two foot after it was trying to pass a lot of total they were full of baloney, but it did. It actually grew two foot. Well, we're trying to pass it. And then we got another dry spell, and we got another nice rain in a couple weeks, and we was just on the edge all summer. And some of these farms a little more on the edge than others. Here where we're at now, this is some of the late rains, and uh, it kind of shows uh, the yields are way better than they should be. But the plant health is really poor because this corn put everything it had into making an ear. Uh, Cannibalized stocks, uh, stock quality, plant health is, is very poor. And uh, even where we straight fungicide, uh, it, it didn't make any difference. The plant health is poor everywhere. Looking at the corn shell, it looks like it ought to be uh, late October instead of late September. Plants are dead, tops falling out of one of them, and we're showing uh, 14 to 15 percent moisture corn in September. Pretty much unheard of around here. But the good Lord took care of us. I certainly had my doubts a lot of days, but. It all worked out in the end. I like the program, but it's just getting too difficult to spray, and we were forced to use Plan B all the time. And so we switched to E3, and so far I, I'm really happy. Uh, as you know, we had one of the driest summers that I think we've had in 40 years. I, I farmed in, in 83, I farmed in 88, I farmed in 2012. And I think we're drier this summer than we were any of those years. And yet we're raising really respectable crops because we've got good corn hybrids and good bean varieties to choose from that have just done a tremendous job of producing in these adverse conditions. It's just been unreal. Way it was dry early the spring. We got all the corn and beans planted in April, which we've never done before. We started to harvest the uh, 20th of September or somewhere in there, and pretty much worked just about every day. We didn't have to hit it real hard, we were still done uh, early, early, and until it just kind of been the same way. We've had a few little uh, sprinkle delays, but for the most part we've been able to do about anything we want to do. And we're going to need some rain going into spring, and we could have used a little rain this summer, but uh, all in all it's just been a kind of an unbelievable year. Very, very little rain and some really good crops. Everybody always laughs about the old better than expected and, and everything just been 
that you expected because the drives was we weren't expecting a whole lot and we ended up with a lot. But yes, I'm with. By now you probably figured out the reoccurring theme in this video about uh, it's all about soil types and it's all about rain. It takes rain to make rain and the first half of the growing season we didn't have any rain. But we did finally get some the second half. Also takes good hybrids. Today's hybrids are bred to withstand a lot of this stress and still be able to come through and produce, produce some good yields as you can see in this yield map. Uh, how that varies in the field. Uh, you'll see some charts come up here from our climate that shows, you know, yields by uh, soil type uh, for corn and beans, yields by uh, farm for corn and beans, and by hybrid and variety. Now keep in mind, the high yields are the higher yielding farms, and then the varieties and the hybrids, that's also uh, because we plant the high yielding varieties on the best farms. So just because a hybrid or variety is down toward the bottom, doesn't mean it was poor. It was met that we chose it for that tougher dirt. So it's it's kind of it, in the end of the day, we was just blessed with way more crop than we should have ever gotten for as as bad and ugly as things looked up until the first of July. Welcome to both farms. Welcome. Hope you like our video. Cut. Take 17. Both farms here. Today we're at Mark Twin Lake. The, behind us is the dam that we're going to watch the fireworks. Cut, cut, cut. <laughs>